Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, minimum number of vertices to reach all nodes. We're given a directed acyclical graph with n vertices numbered from zero to n minus one. And we want to find the smallest set of vertices from which all other nodes in the graph are reachable. And it's guaranteed that a single unique solution exists and we can return those vertices in any order. So let's take a look at this example. I blew it up. In this graph, you can see that if we start from zero, we can then traverse one and then we can traverse two and then we can just continue going and traverse five. Now from two, we can't go in this direction because these edges are directed and this one is going the other way. So starting from zero, we couldn't quite reach the entire graph, but among the two nodes left that we have unvisited, which one do you think is better? Probably three because it's the one that has an outgoing edge to four. And then from four, we can continue, but we've already visited the entire graph. So the idea is pretty simple. And with graph problems, you almost always think of either a DFS or BFS solution, if not like a more academic algorithm like Dijkstra's. That might be the first time I ever pronounced that correctly. But if you try to do that for this problem, you're going to get confused and you're going to think that this is a super difficult problem, but it's actually not. You have to go back to the drawing board and carefully reread the problem, even if they didn't tell us that this was a directed acyclical graph aka a tree, even if they didn't explicitly tell us that, when they tell you that there's a single unique solution, by definition, it can't be cyclical because imagine there's an edge going here, there's an edge going here, and then there's an edge going here. Pretend the other nodes don't exist. In this graph, what would the solution set be? Well, it could be one because we can then reach all of the nodes. It could also be two because then we can reach all of the nodes. It could also even be zero. So by telling us that this is an acyclical graph, they actually helped us. Can we use that fact to our advantage? Well, if I had a tree, I'm drawing it like this, you'd probably think the entire tree is of course visitable, well, reachable if we start at the root and then just continue traversing. With like a generic graph, it's not quite a binary tree. Our graph could actually even be in pieces if I'm understanding this correctly. We could have like multiple trees and this counts as our graph as well, something like this. And unlike binary trees, we could have multiple incoming edges for a single node. Like this guy has now two incoming edges, one coming from here and one coming from over there. But again, how do you think we can traverse the entire graph? Probably just starting at all of the root nodes. What's special about the root nodes? Well, they're the only nodes that don't have incoming edges. Incoming edges. That's the whole idea behind this problem. Notice anything similar between these two nodes. They don't have incoming edges everybody else does. What we have to do here is we're given a list of edges. We will, for every node, count the incoming edges or maybe just get all of the incoming edges. It doesn't really matter. We can create a list for each node. And then we'll find all of the nodes that did not have incoming edges, which are only these guys in this problem. And since we're only having to traverse the total number of edges, we'll also have to probably iterate through n because we'll have to check every node. So pretty much the time complexity here is going to be big O of, let's say, E plus V, where E is the number of edges, V is the number of vertices. I think the space complexity is also going to be the same. So now let's code it up. Okay, so we know the first thing we're trying to do is just get all the incoming edges for every node. What I'm going to do is create a hash map and a special type, a collections.default dict. You'll see why in just a second, but we want the default value to be a list because for every node, we want to get all of the incoming nodes. We can do that by iterating through the edges. We know each edge is directed, so it will be a source destination pair and we can say for incoming we want to usually with adjacency lists we say the source is mapped to the destination we would then say this is going to be a list we know that because that's what our default dict is initialized with and then to that we want to append the destination in this case though we want to do it in the opposite order we want the incoming nodes so we say for the destination get all of the source nodes for that node. So that's easy enough, especially in Python. And then we want to iterate not through the incoming edges. Actually, we want to iterate through I in range N because N tells us all of our nodes from zero to N minus one tells us the nodes. And for each node, we want to know, does this node have any incoming edges? If not, 
incoming for this node, then we can say for our result, which is going to be a list, we're going to append this node because this is a node without incoming edges. So that is going to be our solution set and the order of them doesn't really matter. So we can then just go out here and return it and I'll run this to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.